In this video, I want to talk about one particular type of panel model estimator, which circumvents the problem of unobserved heterogeneity. And it, that is the technique of first differences or something which we refer to as a first differences model. So in order to introduce this technique, we need to refer to a particular model and it's, we're just gonna use the model we talked about in the last video. So here we're looking at how the crime rate in a given city I at time T affects the house prices in that particular city at a particular point in time. And we included as well a range of time dependence, um, which was essentially the same across all these different cities by explicitly including dummy variables for each of these particular time periods. So these are the various factors which are the same across different cities in let's say the US, but vary over time. So this might just represent sort of overall trends in house prices across time. And as well as these particular time dependent terms, there were also some dependence on that particular city, which doesn't vary across time, which I'm calling here alpha i, and as well as having some sort of idiosyncratic error so this is an error which basically varies across city and across time. And we're assuming that this idiosyncratic error is uncorrelated with the crime rate um, because of the fact that even though I haven't written it here, I'm sort of thinking about the circumstance where we would be including all the various other factors which vary across city and across time. So we might be including, let's say, the unemployment rate in this above regression as well, if we thought that that might have an effect. But in this particular video, just to make things simple, I'm just gonna assume that we've done all that and it's sort of explicitly been included for, even though I don't write down those particular terms. So we spoke about the problems with this above regression because of the fact that we have this unobserved hetero heterogeneity term. And the problem with this unobserved heterogeneity term, which contains things which don't vary across time, but they vary across I, was that this caused the covariance of our error. And it, well, our error here is just the sum of these two things, which I'm gonna call eta right t, with the independent variable in this circumstance, crime in city I at time t, to be not equal to zero. And because of that, that meant that we had an issue of endogeneity. So if we were to estimate the above regression via pooled OLS, we know that it's both going to be biased and more importantly, it is going to be inconsistent. So we definitely don't want to estimate this model as it stands via pooled OLS. So what can we do? Well, this motivates the introduction of the first differences estimator. And the first differences estimator, as you might have guessed from its name, is essentially, rather than looking at the levels of house prices, is to look at the first difference of house prices. So what we do here is we take the house price in city I at time T, and then we take off the house price in city i at time t minus one. And we call that the first difference of house prices. So I write a capital delta here, house prices i t. And so we've done it to the left-hand side, we have to do the same to the right-hand side. Well, what's gonna happen to each of these terms? So the first one, the beta naught term here, because it's constant across time, it's just gonna disappear because I'm just gonna be left with a beta naught minus another beta naught, so that's not gonna be there anymore. So I'm just gonna have that the change in house prices for city I at time T is equal to beta one times the change in the crime rate for city I at time T, plus, well, each of these dummy variables is gonna now become something slightly different. So I'm gonna have gamma one times the first difference of delta two T, and I'd have to do the same for each of the other dummy variables in time but importantly, when I come to consider this unobserved heterogeneity term here, because of the fact that it doesn't vary across time, similar to beta naught, I'm just going to have alpha i 
minus alpha i. So it's actually going to disappear. And the final term I'm just going to be left with is the change in uit. Okay, so essentially by taking the first differences, we have removed this unobserved heterogeneity term here. And in principle, if we have on this new system that the covariance of, in this circumstance, the change in the crime rate for city i at time t, with now our error, which is this delta uit, if it is the circumstance, if it is the case rather that this is equal to zero, and assuming that we have no heteroscedasticity and we have no um, serial correlation of this particular term, then we should have consistent estimates produced by just estimating called OLS on this first different system. And um, when we estimate called OLS on the first different system, this is what we refer to as the first differences estimator. Okay, so one small other thing I should mention in order for us to have consistent estimates is that we have to have some variance in the change in crime rate for city i at time t. So we have to have variance across both time t and city i in this change in crime rate. We need variance across time because if there wasn't any variance across time, when the first difference of crime rate is taken, it would essentially be removed. And you can think about the first differences, essentially transformation, as removing all those terms which aren't varying across time. So we better have some variance across time if we want to ascertain its effect on house prices via the first differences estimation. Similarly, we need some variance across city because if there's no variance across city, then we're going to have a hard time deciphering its effect on house prices. So if we don't have much variation across city, similarly, we're going to run into problems. So we required that the first difference of crime rate satisfies these two particular criteria. Okay, so the first differences estimator seems like a pretty good thing to do. We, we under not very restrictive uh, assumptions, we should hopefully get consistent estimators. But there are some costs to first difference estimator, as we should expect, we don't get anything for free. One of the costs is that even though there may be significant variation in the crime rate across different cities and across different points in time, so that's just the level of crime rate, it may be the case that there is actually quite a small variation in the first difference of crime rate. So because of this small variation in the first difference of that particular independent variable, that means that first difference estimators are going to have potentially a high error or a high standard error, which means that we're going to have a harder job doing inference on the first different system. Another potential cost is that we have no time independent factors. And well, we should expect that, right? Part of the reason we took the first difference was to remove any of time independent factors. But this might be a problem in itself. If we're trying to estimate the effects of a time independent factor, then first differences estimation certainly isn't the way to go. So that's another potential problem.